Hey YouTube, this is Rishika. So this would be my 38th video tutorial on data stage and second video tutorial on uh, uh, I mean second video tutorial regarding the development and debugging stages. In the previous video tutorial I explained the head stage. So uh, as I said in the previous video tutorial I'll be dealing with tail stage uh, in this video. Okay, so it's it's not a big of uh, it's not of a big deal because it's pretty much same as a head stage, but uh, tail, right? So you get the last uh, last records. That's it. And unlike head stage, we don't have many options in the uh, tail stage. So unlike uh, head stage, we don't have like a uh, skip thing and all those things. The, those things are just uh, limited to head stage, but not the tail stage. Okay, so it's it's pretty much uh, this very simple stage. So yeah it, it it doesn't take much of a time so let me let me just uh, explain with an example directly uh, but yeah as as per our uh, thing just just a little brief overview tail stage is again a development and debug stage and this stage is mostly used for uh, like basically uh, while testing if the job uh, functions right or not or testing if the records are going well to the uh, whatever the output or the next stage or something like that or just to know uh, if something is wrong on the partition or something okay so that's basically uh, the main uh, use of this uh, tail stage before writing it to the or uh, before uh, before running uh, before running it live uh, on the on the data stage server just if if you want to check it yourself if <coughs> sorry if you just want to check it yourself if everything is working out well so yeah you need to make sure that you can use this head or tail or any other stages in the de development and debug as per the requirement okay so yep that's pretty much about this and as uh, as similar to head stage it can accept single input link and can uh, can have only one output link not more than single input link and not more than single output link okay so yeah that's pretty much about it and here uh, in the tail stage it doesn't have many properties see if if i click on this rows there are no available properties to add box this is not highlighting right this means that we don't have any pro any other properties except the number of rows per partition that's it okay and same uh, same is the case with partitions we don't have any available properties to add so it's just one okay and these are not repeatable properties okay so rows uh, as we learned in head stage it's number of rows per partition right so by default it's always 10 but if you want to know if you want to see uh, just a limited number of rows per partition yeah you can mention whatever whatever the number you can mention it gives those number of rows per partition okay so say if you have like 400 rows and you're trying to read only 10 rows per partition so that going to be 10 rows per partition so four four partitions right so four partitions is like 40 40 rows so 40 out of those 400 rows 40 rows will be written to the output that's it and uh, next is all partition uh, i mean partitions we have a sub property called uh, all partitions so yeah this thing we also have seen in the head stage right so yeah it's pretty simple so uh, all partitions true means you are trying to read from all the partitions and if you're not uh, and if you're not interested in trying to know uh, all the partitions and you're trying to concentrate on just one partition uh, if you have like doubt or something and if you're sh if you're not sure that works well or not so yeah this just make this all partitions into false and then choose whatever the partition number but this partition number is a repeatable property so this partition number when you click on this see now the available properties to add comes up right so yeah whenever you click this all partitions false then the partition number you can have any number of partition numbers here you can have any number of partition numbers right it's, it's a repeatable property okay so yep that that's that's all about this uh, properties so now uh, let's get into the example okay so oracle and then oracle username is scott sorry scott and password and SQL yes and table is EMP okay and let's dump the columns or the table definitions okay EMP okay okay all set uh, then tail okay number of partitions I, I do have like 14 rows in that EMP table 
as far as I remember, 14 or 15. So I'll try to read uh, just uh, three part, uh, three rows per partition. And let's not read from, uh, it's true means nothing, right? Because I have two partitions. So it's going to read three partitions from the first, uh, three rows from the first partition and the three rows from the second partition. So overall, it's going to be six rows. But when I make it false and I'm trying to read only from one partition, so my partition number is zero, okay, for the uh, first, my partition uh, basically is named zero, the first partition is named zero and the second partition is named one, okay. So if I'm trying to read only uh, from one partition, so obviously out of those 14 or 15 rows from the input, I'm trying to read only three rows per partition and that partition is the rows which I'm trying to read a, a partition is on this partition on zero number partition okay so yep that's pretty much it and input uh, let me try and make it round robin because we'll we'll, we'll know what exact uh, we can't choose I mean for this example in real time you can choose uh, any of this partition technique based upon your need but uh, to make it simple uh, for this example if we choose hash and all those we don't know which which record is going to which uh, partition right so to make it simple i'm choosing round robin okay so round robin means uh, when it chooses last three records first one uh, i mean it, it doesn't matter now because we are trying to read only for uh, only one partition but when we are trying to read multiple partitions as in head stage yeah round robin technique for your practice you can you can then uh, see the output data and see uh, like okay this is from the first partition and this is from the second partition and uh, uh, and yeah let's let's continue it doesn't matter because still we are trying to read from only uh, one partition so as I said it doesn't matter because since we are trying to read from only one partition let's let's for this example sake let's leave it to auto but if I'm trying to read from two partitions and want to know uh, which record is being written to that as as in head stage example I choose uh, I prefer round robin for this example sake not in real time okay so yeah let, let me just choose the uh, auto stage I mean auto partitioning technique sorry and now go to the output tab and just map the columns dump all the columns to the output okay and that's it we are done with the uh, uh, tail stage okay yeah this is already done so I chose the file first, first itself so it's pretty much done right so now uh, let, just let's uh, run the job compile and run the job so that yeah it's compiled and now just uh, see uh, out of out of those 14 or 15 records because we are trying to read only three records per partition and per partition right so we choose only one partition so obviously it's going to read three records so yep that part is right now let's see uh, what records it has written so tail right so tail means unlike head stage tail will write from the bottom okay so tail means head means the top tail means bottom right so tail unlike uh, tail what happens is it, it, it tries to record it, it tries to write the records from the bottom starting from the bottom okay now uh, let me do one thing let me just have uh, those uh, what do I say uh, let me have a notepad and let me uh, let me just uh, compare the data and let's see what exactly is happening so uh, here's my uh, here's the input data uh, normal uh, actual input data okay so as I said tail reads from the bottom right so what did we do we are trying to record uh, we are trying to read for last uh, last six uh, last three records right last three three records of the partition uh, zero right so what happens is partition zero and uh, let's say partition one okay so what normally happens uh, is i mean i chose the round robin because we uh, we were trying to read only uh, I, I mean i chose auto partitioning technique because we are trying to read only from the one partition but if i choose the round robin so what exactly happens is seven three six nine and seven five two one and uh seven six five four seven six nine eight seven seven eight eight so uh seven seven eight eight and seven eight four four so these will be returned to the uh these will be returned to the uh first partition right okay let me just uh, okay 
yeah so these will be written to the partition number zero because okay one more I guess three and three six okay seven eight four four and one two three yeah seven eight four four and seven nine zero zero okay so these are written to the partition number zero and what happens in partition number one is uh, seven four nine nine seven five six six seven six five four oh seven six nine eight seven seven eight two seven eight three nine seven eight seven six seven nine zero two so basically if you choose round robin partitioning technique this is how the uh, th this uh, this thing uh, uh, what do I say this thing partitions right uh, seven records on one partition and seven records on another partition right so now uh, we are trying to read only these things right uh, we are trying to read only three three records from partition zero but from the last right so what does it do now is because we choose auto what does this tail do now is it will try to it will try to read first uh, three three rows per partition right so three rows per partition it will try to read from the bottom so what exactly happens on uh, uh, okay what exactly happens on now is let me just put the data okay so what exactly happens now is it will try to read last six rows okay so seven nine three four seven nine zero two seven nine zero zero seven eight seven six seven eight uh, seven eight four four one two three seven eight four four and seven eight three nine okay so these rows last six rows will be red okay uh, because which i mean if you choose round round robin partitioning technique so out of these out of these thing i think yeah so uh, now what happens is these things these things uh, out of these six records the f this last one will be written to partition zero because the tail one right so first record so tail one means this record the last one will be considered as the first record so first record will be written to the first partition right and then uh, partition one and then partition zero partition one partition zero partition one okay so this is how these six records because we choose three rows per partition this is how uh, they they uh, basically divide right okay so this is pretty easy okay so uh, yeah this this is how they divide but what did we choose we choose only the records from the partition zero right so what are the records from the partition zero seven eight three nine seven eight seven six and seven nine zero two so these records should be written to the output right so uh, can we uh, just let's see if these are the same records that are written to the output okay seven eight three nine sorry yep seven eight three nine i see seven eight three nine seven eight seven six yep that's right and seven nine zero two right so because it doesn't have an order because we choose the auto partitioning technique right auto means it, it, it just writes itself in a in some order okay but though uh, it's in the some order it's it's still uh, it's still the uh, I mean uh, the same records right so yep that makes sense a lot right so that's pretty much about the uh, head stage and yeah if you don't choose uh, if you don't choose this uh, partition number and if you would make it just true then what happens is uh, what happens is these all records will be written so this is how uh, basically yeah so along with these three records these other records will also be written seven nine three four or what, whatever on this partition number one are there those records will also be written to the output so uh, ultimately we will we will be getting three rows from first partition and three rows from the second partition so we'll be writing six rows to the output okay so yeah that's that's pretty much about this uh, tail stage it's a pretty simple stage not not a lot properties and not not little uh, i mean these stages are not complex development and debugging stages but still uh, it has very limited properties unlike the head stage okay so that's pretty much about this so uh, in my next video i'll probably deal with a uh, sample stage 
okay so once we are done with sample peak and column generator and row generator yeah it's with it, it will be probably done in like uh, four or five videos so we should be good and then we'll go to uh, next the processing stages whatever all left uh, left up in the processing stages okay so uh, thank you guys thank you so much for watching and uh, thanks for uh, thanks for your uh, interest in learning data stage and please do spread the word so that it would be helping to the new data stage learners which is my primary aim primary goal to reach out to the uh, masses who are like learning that data stage or interested to learn data stage okay so uh, thank you guys thank you so much for watching